Hey, what's going on guys? I have Studios here for another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to fill an object with spheres, um, or with clones, any kind of clone you want. I'm going to be using spheres though. So um, let's get started. First, we're going to add in some text. I'm using, I'm going to be filling some text, but you can fill whatever you want. You just need to kind of apply what I'm doing here to whatever object you have. So we're going to add in some text, and we're going to call this text, uh, we're going to call it... Um, cloner you can call it absolutely anything you want but i'm just gonna say cloner and um horizontal spacing you're gonna want to bring this up just for the future because i know you're gonna need um you're gonna want more spacing trust me because it'll get really crowded just like that horizontal spacing i'll do 40. okay the next thing we're gonna do is um we're gonna extrude it so go up here grab an extrude drop the text into the extrude and go to display, go red shading, and we're going to increase the polygons on this. So, um, we're going to first subdivision, we'll bring that up to about, um, you can see the subdivisions control here, the, um, the extrude, this side here. I don't know how to explain it, but you, you see what it controls. Uh, we're going to set that to about 6, I think, and in the caps, type, quadrangles, regular grid, and bring the width down to 3 centimeters. Um, and I think that's that. That's good. Um, we don't need to change that. There aren't very many polygons here, but um, I think that'll be okay since we're using a volume fill anyway. Um, and I'll explain more about that later. Okay, so we got our cloner thing here. Now we're gonna um, go ahead and make this editable. So we're gonna just hit C on the actually hit C on the extrude, and we're gonna open it up. Select everything here. Right click and connect objects plus delete. There you go. And we'll just call this text. Now we're gonna add in a sphere. We're gonna move, scale it down quite a bit, just like that. And um, we're gonna bring down the segments. Now here's an interesting tip. I know there aren't many segments. There's only three segments on this thing. But if we render it, perfect sphere, nothing to worry about. And that's because of font shading. So um, don't worry about that. Just for this example, or for this um, tutorial, don't you don't need to put many polygons at all and it will look just fine, just like the perfect sphere. Anyway, uh, we're going to add in a cloner now. So head up to MoGraph and Cloner. And we're going to drop the sphere into the cloner. And you can see here it's already cloning it a bit, but obviously we don't want spheres here. We want the spheres to be um, along the, the text, um, the cloner text. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our cloner. And we're going to um, set the mode to object. And we're going to drag the... Um, text, oh, I'm going to drag the text into the object um, thing here, and boom, there you go, lots of clones, but it's laggy as hell, so um, we are going to, like, if I try to move around here, ooh, that's really laggy, yeah, that's not going to work, so distribution, set that to volume, and we're going to actually make our uh, text not editable, and we're going to, we're going to make our text not visible, sorry, we're going to say not editable, not visible in the editor or in the, um, the render and the count we're gonna set that up to about 2,000 should be good 2,000 now let's wait for that this may take a second okay boom there we go now that actually I'm gonna set it down to 1,800 that's too much <clears throat> now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna space them out a bit so we'll do this using a um, rigid body and just bear with me here so we're gonna add in a simulation rigid body follow position 10 and hit play that's going to lag. Don't worry about it, though. That's going to bring it up a lot. That's a lot of um, clones. We're going to bring down the amount of clones, I think. Our actually, full position, let's bring that up to 15. And we're going to decrease the amount of clones to about 1,600, I think. All right, let's restart that. Let's see here. Okay, it's pretty good. Actually, what we'll do is we'll just try to progress it one frame at a time. Yeah, that looks cloner if we render this how does it look pretty good um they're spaced out more now so that's good um i think this will do what we can do actually is we can scale down the sphere a bit if we want to we can make that seven maybe that'll help solve it a bit yeah that helps it make a lot makes it a bit better so what we're going to do is we're actually going to scale down our sphere to five centimeters and we're going to retry this rigid body simulation go and if we give it a test render 
Looks pretty good. There we go. We can actually bring it up. Thanks. Let's try that. I should probably have known these values before I made the tutorial, but I'm kind of doing it on the go. There we go. Kilner. That looks pretty good. I think that'll do. Now, also in our rigid body, just go and dynamics set initial state. And we can delete the rigid body. Boom. Oh, no, we can't. Control Z. Oh, I screwed it up. <laughs> we cannot delete it. Um, we will need to just keep it there. It's fine. We'll just keep it there and set initial state. And there you go. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to add a backdrop. Actually, first we'll add our camera. So we'll just look at the sphere or look at the cloner thing text like that. Add in a camera. And we're going to do our backdrop now. So new cube. Uh, we're going to put it right about there-ish. It's pretty good. It's not too, uh, not too specific. We're going to scale it up and add in the fillet. Bring up the fillet radius. Okay, maybe not that much. Maybe like that much. And just like that. Make the object editable. Go to polygon mode. Hold right click. Select all these. Um, there we go. And we're going to hit control A. Uh, hold shift while left clicking. And we're going to deselect all these polygons here. Then delete and delete them all. Uh, or all the polygons that we did not select. And actually, we'll turn off our go-red shading. Okay. Our cube, we will move this up. And move it back, just like that. Now, we're going to uh, new material, apply it to the backdrop. New material again, apply it to our sphere. Open up the new material. New reflectance, add GGX. Uh, layer for now, and we're going to use dialectic. And we're going to set the roughness to about... 3%. I think that should be good. And for our color, we will use a nice red. We'll use a nice deep red. Yeah, good. Nice deep red like that. Okay, and we're done uh, with that material. Now we are going to go ahead and add some lighting. So we'll do that by adding in a new plane. We're going to move it up to the top. Now this isn't any kind of studio lighting exactly, but it's just a quick soft box that you can make. And if you want actual good studio lighting, uh, I made a tutorial on that. So you can check that video out. It's on my channel, and I think I'll try to leave a link in the description if I can remember. Uh, and we'll just add it right on top, the whole thing. And new material, apply it to the top light thing, whatever this plane that we're using is the top light. I don't know what to call it. Um, and enable luminance, disable reflectance, uh, disable color, and illumination, enable GI area light, and strength. We'll set that to 180%. Okay, so we're going to go into our... We'll go into our camera now. Let's see here. Okay, in your render settings, open it up. Um, output, oh, oh, 1920 by 1080. And uh, anti-aliasing, we're gonna bring that up to best. And you can do one by one, two by two, if you just want some quick AA. Quick AA. But uh, I want some pretty high quality anti-aliasing, so I'm gonna bring that to two by two and four by four, just like that. Effect, global, or effect ambient occlusion, and effect global illumination. And preset, probably want to do object visualization high. If it takes too long to render, you can bring down the samples. But um, for me, I think this is pretty decent. And um, yeah, I think that is that. I'm going to just turn off ambient occlusion, or I'm going to turn off global illumination, and I'm just going to give it a test render. Um, how does this look? Checking the spacing between the spheres. Yeah, I think the spacing between the spheres and everything is good. So I'll enable uh, global illumination, and I think that is that. You can um, obviously change these settings a bit um, if you want to, but I think this is all good. Actually, reflective caustics, we can enable that if you want to. And um, yeah, we are done. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys later. Bye!